Hello. Been raining cats and dogs here for the last night and day. Um, but luckily, we have a boat. Um, this particular machine was our very first caravan that we've had leased out for the last five years and only got it back last week, maybe the week before. Um, as you can see, it's on floats, which is very exciting. Uh, so as soon as we don't get wet, we'll back out, we'll have a look around it. It appears we are going to get wet, so I'll hurry. Uh, oh, look at that. Just about pull the wheels up and sail away. Uh, first thing you realise about it is just how high up it sits. So we've got two steps in the floats. Beaver floats only have one step. They're not quite as big. And we have a set of stairs up into the cockpit. I'll widen that out a bit. Um, so you can see just how high up we are. We're um, looking looking down on chieftains, metaphorically and otherwise. Um, now this one, um, when we first got it, um, I thought it was an excellent panel layout, which obviously it is, um, but it'll become a little bit more precious these days since our avionics dealership. So I, I, uh, I really am starting to get used to our touchscreen stuff. So these are the 43530s, which are still awesome units, um, huge amounts of functionality. Um, you just get so, so precious and used to just tapping on the screen. Um, so you can see there that we're, we're practically in line with the, the top half of the door of the hangar. And it's a bit hard to show in a video just how high up it feels, um, especially without another caravan on wheels sitting next to it. But the other thing to note is that uh, you're also about a foot different height whether you're landing on water or land. Obviously because landing on water you'll have the wheels retracted. This machine's a short body caravan, so uh, just shy of four feet shorter than our Grand Caravan uh, and fitted out with 10 seats, including the driver seats. So the extra bits we have in a float caravan as far as the cockpit is the lever here for the undercarriage and you see we've got four for uh, the four wheels rather than traditional three. So we have four blue for water or four red for dirt. And then these two lights here are when the, uh, the hide pumps are actually running. So if I hit the master switch now, you'll see they both pressurise and then they go out because there's, um, there's no movement of the gear. Whereas once we cycle the gear, then you'll find that they'll be running the whole time it's cycling. Uh, I'll turn that off to save us some battery. Down here, we have the emergency pump. So if we needed to get the gear down uh, manually, we'd be pumping that lever there. Uh, I've had to do it before. Uh, on the beaver on floats and the uh, the number of pumps it requires to get the gear down is lots What we also have is our water rudder handle. So that's up and That's down there so that we can steer on the water And pull that one back up. It's just an over center that holds it in place And we'll have a look at those once we jump out of the machine So as soon as it stops raining, we'll get out and we'll go and have a look at how the floats work so the floats on the caravan are Whipline 8000s. Um, you can put 8750s on there, which obviously, as well as being a bit larger, uh, because the model name or the model number denotes the uh, the size of them. The, um, the 8750s also have a bit of a deep keel as well, um, but uh, very very similar similar setup. In that we've got dualies on the back, and they retract up into that compartment there, which doesn't seal. A lot of people are quite amazed that it doesn't seal. That's just open to the water. And the nose gear, basically this piece here goes horizontal and then drags back into, into there so that you've only got the, uh, the wheel itself, the tire itself sitting just there. Uh, we also have some lockers where we can put snacks and things in there. Uh, they're quite deep on the caravan. I mean, they're, they're pretty huge on the beaver as well, but even bigger again on the caravan. And they just laps like that. We've got ropes help us when we're trying to get someone to grab hold of it when it's sailing away from the dock. Uh, we've also got 
a rope there for the same purpose. We have alpedo covers on very large sticks. And whilst we're looking up there, you can see we've got a mirror there, which we also have on the pilot side as well, so that we can visually see where our main gear is. The, uh, the nose gear, you can actually just see the, uh, see the front of it and know whether it's up or down. Here's the water rudders we talked about in the cockpit. So that's in the retracted position where we pulled them up to. And you can see the, uh, the fittings here, they're not the hugest bolts. So if you, if you land with the water rudders down, um, you're very, very likely to tear them off. Um, same with taking off with them down, probably slightly less likely to tear them off, but uh, still a very high probability. Uh, we have little bungs all the way along. It's Underneath there is a tube that goes down to the bottom of the float. And what we use that for is we duck around the puddles to this side. We have a pump that looks like a yabby pump. And what we do with that is we put it in one of those holes and we pump up and down, and that pumps the water from the bottom of the floats overboard. And that uh, gets you gets your steps in for the day. Put that back in the compartment. Extra to a land-based caravan. We have those extra fins there, which help you more directional control, the directional stability, because of course, on the water, don't have the advantage of the, uh, the friction of the tyres on the tar like we would on a runway, so we're a little bit more reliant on the uh, on the aerodynamic ability to steer it. We've talked about the exhaust on the land plane before, how it juts out the side so that we don't uh, we don't put hot exhaust onto where the pod would be, which would be right there. And uh, you can see here, this exhaust though, doesn't, uh, doesn't jut out the side as much because if it did, it would be blowing the hot air straight onto that strut there, which would bubble the paint away, make it very, very hot if someone touched it. Underneath the aeroplane, we have our spare engine there, uh, which is one person power. What well, that converts to into horsepower, I'm not 100% certain. Under here, we've got the, uh, the fuel drain for the reservoir tank or the header tank, which on the caravan with the pod, it is the one that comes out about here at the side of the pod, uh, which is purely piping it from there out to where, somewhere where it's, uh, where it's usable. Another cool feature we've got in the Amphib caravan is the gear advisory system. And uh, it's speed based, it comes on lower 100 knots and tells us where the gear is and what we should be landing on. And if I put the camera up near the cabin speaker there and press the test button, you'll hear the voices, make sure it works. Maybe not, didn't press it long enough. Yeah, obviously that comes through a lot louder when you've got a headset on and We've got the speaker turned up, which is up there. If we duck down the back, this particular caravan has what they call the cabin extension mod, which is uh, basically behind the rear baggage compartment, which on our other caravan, there's the wall there. We have additional baggage. Uh, so that's actually a modification, that one. It's had it since we, uh, since we bought it. And there's the, uh, the hat rack. My favourite advantage of this caravan over our other one is these substantial cup holders. It's a little bit more sturdy than the ones that come out from here. Uh, so I'd love to know if they are a mod, because if they are, uh, we'll get them for the other caravan. Well, thanks for watching that little rainy tour of the Amphib caravan. Uh, I'll try and get some videos of it in action over the next few weeks and uh, show you just how fun they are. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.